People always ask, I want to marry an immigrant or my boyfriend slash girlfriend uh, is from another country. Is it better for me to marry them in their country or marry them here? Well, the answer is it depends. What you can say is it is better to marry them in whatever country they are physically located when you decide to marry them. And here's what it comes down to. If you marry them in their country, then you need to do what's called a consular process. In other words, whatever petition you're going to do has to be done in their country. You do all the paperwork here, but the interview is gonna be done in their country, which means they are gonna be stuck in their country until the interview is completed, okay? And then they're able to come over here. If you're here or if they're here and you decide to marry here, you may be eligible for what's called an adjustment of status or a one-step application where everything gets done here and they wait here for the decision to be made. What does this all come down to? Well, first of all, you've got to know how did your significant other enter the US? If they entered with inspection or what people erroneously call legally, okay, then it doesn't matter how long ago it was and it doesn't matter if they overstayed, they are likely eligible to do the one-step adjustment of status, which means you follow all the paperwork here, you have the interview here, they get their green card or permanent residency here. And while they're waiting, they usually will also get an employment authorization card, which allows them to get a social security number, driver's license, and begin to have a normal life here while they're waiting for all the paperwork to be done. Before the pandemic, all of this paperwork here would take about six, maybe seven months, and they'd have their green card. After the pandemic, we're telling people it takes about a year, okay? So it's a while. Now, if they're in another country, or if they entered without inspection, okay, what people erroneously call illegally, then they're probably not eligible to do the adjustment of status or one step. They've got to do the consular process. And that is going to take usually about a year and a half to two years before they get that interview date. So even if you go down there and you get married over there, they can't come back with you. Now, sometimes people say, well, you know, they've got a tourist visa so we can get married down there and they'll come back in with the tourist visa and then we'll do the one step over here. No, because what you've done is you've committed fraud or rather your, your significant other has committed fraud because they entered on a tourist visa when they were in fact married to a US citizen and applying for a change of status. That's the fraud and that can be denied. So there's a number of things that can cause the denial and what's worse yet is is that depending on what the denial is, it could be a denial that's gonna cause the separation to be even longer or permanently bar the person from being able to enter the United States. So it's really important to consult with an attorney prior to doing anything so that you know which option is best for you and where your pitfalls might be in the case. You've gotta look at the criminal record of your significant other to see if there's anything that's going to bar them from being able to come to the United States, okay? And these can be things such as driving under the influence of alcohol, uh, a drug addiction, okay? Alcohol issues. Violence can also be um, problems for being able to immigrate to the United States. You've gotta look at those things. And then obviously, if they were ever here without proper documentation, okay? What, again, what people erroneously call illegally, which could be undocumented, could be an overstay, and then they left the country, they could be subject to a bar to re-entry, meaning they cannot come back for a certain amount of time. Could be three years, could be five years, could be 10 years. It could be a permanent bar. So again, it's important to consult with an attorney to be sure about this. Now, as far as the US citizen, what's important is, is have you done this before? Have you applied for immigrants to get a change of status or to get papers in the US before? Immigration is going to look at that. They're also going to look uh, if you have any sex related offenses. Okay. And that's pretty much it. They're really not going to look a whole lot more than that. The next thing is, is money. It's all about the money, honey. And they want to make sure that you have enough money to support your significant other at 120% of the poverty level. So if you look up this year's poverty level and you have to look and see how many people live under your roof, okay, or if you have to pay child support, 
that they include that as well, how many people you have to support, and then they're gonna add that up, and based on that, they're gonna find how much money you have to earn per year. If it's just you and your significant other and nobody else, you don't even have to earn 20,000 a year uh, to be able to cover the 120% of poverty level. So it's important to look at that. If you have a concern about the poverty level, if you think you may not qualify, or if you find out in fact that you do not qualify, then you'll need a co-sponsor, okay? So these are things that can be done, but the key thing is first consult with an attorney before you decide to do anything, including before you ask this person for their hand in marriage, because that may also dictate whether you're doing the paperwork here or whether you're doing the paperwork over there. So as soon as you're thinking about this, consult with an attorney, give us a call at the law offices of Valencia and Diaz, 513-618-2005, and we'll walk you through all the different things that you have to consider, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and tell you what your best option is. Then it's up to you. All right, take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.